Quasimodo is not a bitch. Right guys, so as some of you know, I have amassed quite the Funko Pop collection over the past six months. Something like that. How long have I been sexy on the internet? Anyway, so the reason I held off on getting Funkos for so long, because I've actually wanted them for years, is that I wanted my first Funko Pop in my, as expected, growing collection. I always knew I'd have a lot. To be a special character, someone that's important to me. So I held off because my ADHD wouldn't let me choose my first character for literally years. Then the Val Monsters with their unparalleled ability to make me feel warm and fuzzy inside and quite often cry, stepped up. They came in, they jumped on it and they just sent me a plethora of Funko Pops over the past few months. So I wanted to jump in and do this video and kind of explain why certain uh, Funko characters have been on my wish list, um, why I'm so happy when they arrive, uh, why these are my favorite characters, etc, etc. So you guys kind of know a little bit more about why I chose a certain Funko or a certain character, for example. So you're not just sat there wondering why this random ghost from Haunted Mansion is on Ash's Amazon wish list, and you'll hopefully understand why by the end of this video. Also, if you've sent me any of the Funkos that are uh, explained in this video, then please put, put it down in the comments. Let me know down below so I can say thank you again personally. Um, it's always amazing anytime anyone sends me anything, and I'm always genuinely, genuinely humbled and so thankful. So please, yeah, let me know if you uh, have sent me any of the Funkos that are shown in today's video. Okay, guys, first up we have your boy. Hopefully I can get him to focus. Focus. There we go. Um, and yeah, Quasimodo, absolute icon. I love him. Um, reason for Quasimodo being on the list. Some of you guys already know this. Quasimodo is actually my, well, Hunchback of Notre Dame, I should say, is actually my fifth favorite Disney movie. No, sixth, fifth or sixth favorite Disney movie. Um, and I forgot about it for years. I didn't forget the movie existed, but I forgot how wonderful it was for literal years. I watched it again recently, remembered a few things about it. I'm just gonna put him down, but look how iconic he is. Um, I remembered a few things about Hunchback. So, characters, all incredible, especially Quasimodo. The storyline, fantastic. The music, iconic. And I think the music is a big part about why Hunchback isn't as worshipped as it should be, considering the quality. Um, there's some absolute bangers in Hunchback of Notre Dame. There really is. Not very singable, though, if that makes sense. Like, kids certainly shouldn't be singing, like, what is it, Hellfire, I think it's called? Like, kids should not be singing that. So maybe that's why it hasn't, like, become such an iconic movie, even though it should be. But yeah, that kind of, I think that kind of explains why it's lower down on a lot of people's lists, even though it's amazing. The other thing I remembered is the Frollo. Frollo is the worst Disney villain of all time. If you don't believe me, Go watch it right now. Pause this video right now. Go watch Hunchback of Notre Dame and tell me Frollo isn't the worst Disney villain of all time. I'm happy to do an entire video about it. There's that much to discuss about that guy. Go check it out. Next up, we have Gilderoy Lockhart. Let's hopefully focus on him. There we go. Uh, Gilderoy Lockhart, my favorite uh, Hogwarts professor, which is a dangerous statement to make uh, when you have an account like mine uh, where you kind of play one of the Marauders and one of the good characters. Um, uh, and yeah, when people say, but, Loom but uh, Remus Lupin was a professor, I'm like, yeah, but Gilderoy Lockhart, though. A lot of people don't understand why I like Gilderoy Lockhart. Uh, it's not because he's a good person by any stretch. He's obviously a terrible, terrible human being. But you know me, I'm attracted to the villains. I love the villains. I play a few villains on TikTok. The reason I like Gilderoy Lockhart is because he's an absolute lunatic. He's such an egotistical, narcissistic maniac masquerading as this absolute hero that I just find him so funny. He's such a dangerous character. I find him so funny though. And maybe it's just because Kenneth Branagh is amazing at playing him, but his scenes have me in stitches every single time. Similarly, his demise is iconic. If you haven't seen the post credits scene, by the way, involving Gilderoy Lockhart, go back and watch the movie. Again, pause this video, go watch it, come back and tell me what you think. And there's also this really interesting theory I've heard that Dumbledore knew that Gilderoy was a, why am I first naming him? We're not friends. That Lockhart was a, a uh, was was a fraud and was useless. And he knew that in the upcoming battle that was going to happen a few years down the line with, uh, with Voldemort, that Gilderoy Lockhart, if he wasn't found out to be a fraud, would be called upon to maybe lead the charge as such an iconic superhero of a wizard. And he knew that would be dangerous because he's a fraud and wanted him out of the way. So he hired him as a uh, Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher to eliminate him as a potential risk and help the good guys win the battle. I love that theory. I don't think it's canon. It's probably not canon. But I really like the theory. And that's another reason why I like Gilderoy Lockhart. Next up, we have a super random one. Let's go. 
focus. Boom. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see, because I've got like three ring lights on me, by the way, so these could come out really terrible, and I apologize if so. But, Dr. Doom. Um, yeah, so this is a random one. This is A lot of people probably don't know the story behind this one. Um, this is one I definitely will probably have to explain, as well as a few of the weirder ones on my uh, on my wish list. But Doctor Doom, uh, basically one of my favourite characters uh, in the MCU, um, not the MCU, in the Marvel Universe, I should say. Is he in the MCU? Does Fantastic Four count? Don't think so. Either way, uh, Doctor Doom, iconic character. I've loved him ever since um, my first time riding Doctor Doom's ride in Universal uh, Studios Islands of Adventure. Universal Islands of Adventure. Yeah, Doctor Doom, I kind of fell in love with the lore, literally from riding that ride. It, that's that's where it all came about. I love his aesthetic. Green and silver, I should have known years down the line I was going to be a Slytherin, just based on that. I love his aesthetic. I really, really want to cosplay him one day. He is like... He's one I always forget when people say, who's your dream cosplay? Doctor Doom is my dream cosplay, 100% without question. And yeah, he's an icon of mine. I love him. Um, he's such a fantastic character. And there's actually a story about Doctor Doom from when I last went to Disney World uh, with an ex-girlfriend of mine. So we were in the store outside Doctor Doom's ride uh, and I was looking at some stuff. I was in fact showing her something. I was like, oh, check this out. I can't remember what it was. Probably a, a stuffed animal or something. And... Uh, she was staring over my shoulder, like laughing, and I was like, what's, what's going on? And I turn around, and there is no bullshit, like a seven foot tall Doctor Doom stood inches away from me, looking down at me. Bear in mind, I was 23 at the time, 24 maybe. I jumped out my heckin' skin. The guy scared the crap out of me, and I laughed for a solid, like, three seconds. I was raging. No, kidding, I laughed, uh, I, I laughed hard, but definitely not as hard as my girlfriend laughed for the rest of the day. Uh, so yeah, that, that was a fun time and it was it was really funny. Um, he's such an iconic character. I love him and I definitely got a photo with him after that after that terror. Fourth, we have Prince Eric. Um, yeah, Prince Eric is amazing uh, as both a character and a Funko. The Funko is heckin' adorable, it really is. But the reason I like uh, Prince Eric so much and the reason I, I wanted him as a Funko and he, the reason he was on my list a lot of people ask me my favourite cosplay, uh, in fact I get asked that a heck of a lot, and my answer is always relatively unexpected. I have a few different favourite cosplays for different reasons, I think I've spoke about this in a previous video, but Eric was the first time I felt like a true cosplayer. Uh, I had a friend here, um, and I disappeared out of the room with my long brown hair, uh, beard, brown eyes, etc, etc, and came back upstairs with like slick back hair, blue eyes, no beard, and they didn't recognize me, they're like, whoa! <laughs> and uh, it was the first time I felt like a true cosplayer because I did not look like myself. I looked entirely different. I looked like a completely different character and I finally felt like a true cosplayer and that was when I first played Prince Eric. Um, so he has a special place in my heart for cosplay reasons, I guess. So the last two Funkos I'm gonna run through in this video have a very special place in my heart um, as characters and as Funkos uh, and I'll, I'll explain why with each one. First up, we have the limited edition Captain Hook. Uh, 65th anniversary Disneyland edition, I believe. Um, yeah, Disneyland 65th anniversary. Uh, Captain Hook, stunning Funko. The packaging alone is unbelievable. The Captain Hook is amazing. And I think a lot of you will already know why Captain Hook is special to me. Captain Hook kind of gave me my first uh, taste of cosplaying, I guess, before I was asked to play Sirius Black. I, I played Captain Hook, more Killian Jones from Once Upon a Time. I played him for about a month. Um, back in August or September time last in 2020 last year and yeah Captain Hook gave me my first real uh, entry into the cosplay world and uh, it was so much fun playing the character even though I know nothing about Killian Jones obviously I know a little something about Captain Hook uh, and I was very able to uh, very easily able to sink into that character and have a lot of fun with it this led to me becoming captain of the pirates which was obviously the next phase in my TikTok development um, and it was just a wonderful time I was having a lot of fun around that time uh, with some wonderful people and yeah, Captain Hook and just the Captain of the Pirates, um, very special uh, characters to me. And I'll be bringing them back very, very soon. Finally, we have the very difficult to see on screen, I imagine, um, Otter Patronus Funko Pop. A wonderful Funko Pop. Uh, very, very unique. I know there's a few Patronus ones, but uh, unique as far as the wider collection of Funkos go. Stunning Funko and so, so appropriate. Uh, for me. As far as things go that represent my personality, to have something so specific to me be reality is just insane to me. 
But more importantly, this is actually my uh, most significant, most important Funko Pop uh, by far. It was the first Funko in my collection. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, that was the hardest part for me with starting a Funko collection was deciding on a first one. I wanted it to be special. And this could not be more special. This this is very special Funko to me. Um, the accuracy of the Otter Patronus, my Patronus is an Otter. The, uh, the fact that it was a gift, wonderful. Uh, by a very special Val Monster, of course. Naming no names. It may have actually been my first ever wishlist gift, I think. I can't remember specifically, but I think it may have been my first gift overall. But it was certainly my first Funko. And yeah, it's just wonderful. It's the perfect start to my collection. Uh, the fact that I could not, for, I, for years, I couldn't decide on a Funko. And this one happened to be my first. is so perfect and so special. Um, and I love it very dearly. Uh, and I'm so glad it was the first in my collection. I really am. So yeah, hopefully that lets you guys in a bit more about why I've chosen certain Funkos for my Amazon wishlist or, or why they're special to me or why they're a part of my collection. Hopefully you guys will learn a bit more about me as I always try and do in these videos, try and tell you a bit more about myself. And yeah, this is of course part one. I have plenty more Funkos uh, to go through. So I'll definitely be doing another part um, if not more, if, if you guys ever want to contribute to a future video, if you want to see uh, a Funko that, that you've sent um, featured in a future video, I'll put a link down below. You can see some of the other weird and wonderful characters that are on my list. And you may be very confused by some of the characters that are on my list. There's certainly some weird ones. The ghost from Haunted Mansion, as I mentioned earlier. But yeah, if any of them get sent to me, I'll, I'll definitely include them in a, in a future video and tell you a bit more about the story and the background behind those as well. Because I love telling you guys these stories about why I've chosen certain things or why they're important to me and, and becoming closer friends with you guys. So I'm really happy to do these kind of videos. They're a lot of fun. And yeah, hopefully I'll get to continue to do many more and you guys can learn more about me. So yeah, any questions or comments you guys have on any of the Funkos today or any of the Funkos on my wish list or any that I really want that aren't on my wish list or any you want to suggest that you think I should get, then please let me know down below in the comments. And yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and yeah, there'll be another part of very, very soon. So yeah, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching the video and I shall see you in the next one. Bye.